Greetings, Internet. I am Ken from the Computer Clan, and today I want to show you what Microsoft has been up to with the Windows 10 Creators Update. And you can actually get it for yourself right now if you're on a pre-existing Windows 10 installation. And I'll actually demo some of the features and save one of the more favorited features for last. And then I'll even show you what Microsoft may be doing for a future version of Windows near the end of the video, so stick around for that. And I'll also take questions from you guys in the comments. So for starters, I want to talk about some of the cool things Microsoft did with Edge. So Edge recently started replacing Internet Explorer as the default browser, and there's some handy new features. So let's say I'm browsing here, I'm going through Microsoft's website and all this good stuff, and it's like, well, I want to save this tab for later. I can actually set the tab aside by clicking that button. And even if I close Edge completely and come back to it later, I can click on this button here that will show all the tabs I set aside. So you can see I did that one just now, and I did three others 40 minutes ago. And if I want to get that cluster of tabs back, all I do is hit Restore Tabs, and it will bring me back to that session I had going earlier. In addition, there's a handy little arrow here, and if you click it, it gives you previews of your open tabs. So I can actually jump to one and just kind of go back and forth. I can even close tabs from here as well, and click to switch, and I can collapse it just like that. Another new thing with Edge is... In addition to being able to read PDFs like earlier, Edge can now read eBooks. So if you go to the little hamburger menu up here or the hub, you can actually browse for books right through here and you could shop for them on the Windows Store. However, it will support EPUB files directly. So if I go back to my demo folder here, I can actually get some books that I pulled from another computer and I could just be like, uh, double click this and it will open it up. And this is an ebook I wrote like five years ago. Oh my goodness. But yes, it actually just works here. It has the font. I can scrub through it and go to different pages. And I can even change text spacing, text size, page theme even. I could do like a nighttime mode. I could do like a kind of like a sepia tone and even change the font itself. Maybe go with Sego UI because who doesn't like that, right? So now let's take a look at some gaming updates. So I'm going to launch a game here. And let's do Portal. So as you can see here, we have that familiar press Win G to record a game clip. That's been around for a little bit, but there's a couple of nice changes. So once the game loads up here, I'll show you the ropes. So if I press Windows key G, I open up the game bar. And if I go to settings here, you'll see there's a new tab for broadcast. This will enable me to live stream my gaming through the Beam platform. But another handy feature built into the creator's update is game mode. So game mode allows the games running to leverage the CPU and the GPU inside of your computer so it performs as best as it can. Now this will work for about any Win32 game, just like Portal in the background, but you'll see even more performance enhancements with Windows Universal apps, which are apps you get from the Windows Store. Let's talk about security. There's some nice changes inside of the Creator's Update for security, so I'll just open up the Windows Defender Security Center app. And you'll see some new icons here, virus and threat protection, device performance and health, etc., etc. So for example, if I click this, it could tell me if there's some issues with my computer. Maybe there is a battery issue or maybe there's a driver issue. And it kind of just summarizes it all right inside of here. And I can even launch troubleshooters to try to fix the issue. Speaking of troubleshooting, there was actually a little change in the settings app here. So if I go to my little gear there in the start menu and I go to... I'm just going to search troubleshoot. This option will list all of the troubleshooters in one convenient place. So if I'm more of a power user and I want to fix some stuff, I can just do this through the settings app instead of having to go through the Win32 control panel. So nightlight, when you click it, will actually reduce the blue light in your screen. This helps your eyes, especially at night or in darker lighting conditions, and some say it helps them sleep. So that's an option right there, but it goes a little further than that. If we go to our display settings, we can actually customize the temperature. We can make the orange more saturated or less saturated. And we can even turn on a schedule so the computer can automatically turn nightlight on and off. Now I want to show a feature that's kind of like the opposite of Windows Hello. So if I go to my sign-in options in the settings, you can actually see a new feature called Dynamic Lock. So Windows will automatically lock your computer when you walk away from the device. And you can pair this with like a smartphone or something. So once you walk away and there's a certain distance between you and the computer, the system will automatically lock for you. 
Mini View is another new feature. So let's take a look at the Movies and TV app. And I'm going to open up our latest Cinema Shenanigans episode because why not? Shameless plug. So let's say I'm watching this and having a great time, but I can click this button actually, and it goes into a little picture-in-picture -picture viewer, which stays on top of everything else. So let's say I'm inside of Edge. I can browse around, but this window will stay on top, and I can even reposition it and resize it if I wish. And I can even have some playback controls as well. And it just stays on top while I do everything else on the computer. It's important to note that MiniView is not just for videos. It works for other apps that are developed to work with this feature, such as Skype. And speaking of the Movies and TV app, it does actually support 360 video now as well. So now let's get into the feature that a lot of people were talking about, Paint 3D. So think about the traditional Paint app that has been in Windows since the beginning, but... It's a separate app now. This is separate from the traditional Paint app, and it's focused on 3D, and it has an all-new user interface. So let's just have some fun in here for a bit. Let's click on New. So we have some tabs across the top. We have our brushes here, or our markers. We have our 3D objects, stickers, text, effects, a whole bunch of stuff. Let's create a 3D object here. Let's do a cylinder, and I can just click and drag in the canvas. Define the height there, and I can rotate it using these little handles on the side. I can reposition it, and I'm intersecting the plane there, so I'm just going to kind of drag it forward, and it gives me this 3D view that shows me the overall canvas here. And I can even zoom in and out like this, and again, just rotate by using the little handles here. So now let's say I want to put a sticker on here. Let's say I'm designing a 3D version of the Computer Clan logo. I can actually add a sticker, and here it is here. And I can actually move it around and it just maps automatically to this 3D mesh. And I can resize it here, drag it, center it up, and bada bing bada boom, there we go. And I can even rotate this around some more and you'll see the map just stays there. I could put in other 3D objects here, I could put in a person, I could choose a finish, he can be glossy, he can be matte, I can change the colors and gradients, drag, have him just generate here in space. Rotate them around, and even have some fun and throw some stickers on this guy, right? So let's, you know, let's go to our stickers here. Let's get the ninja cat and put a nice big ninja cat face on there. And, you know, you know this guy's probably a pretty good kisser. Let's put some big, big lips on there, too. Oh, yes, there we go. Got some lips on there. And, you know, give, give him a heart. But, you know, he, he's the Grinch, so it's small. But he could be the Grinch in the third act, so it's really big. So he has a big heart. And there you go. So now we have our 3D mesh there with stickers. And now let's put an eye on here so he's the one-eyed monster. Come up and see the one-eyed monster. All right, I'm having way too much fun with this. But what I can do is close the app and not even think about it. And you may think, whoa, did it save? Well, yeah, it actually did. So if I go back later and I just hit open, it will show my recent projects right there. I click it and boom, it comes up. And I'm not set up with a touch device, but I could imagine working with this, especially with the markers and such, would be a lot better on an actual touch device. So feel free to download this update for yourself and let me know what you think about it and let me know if you have any questions. We are here to help you out. But wait, there's a little bit more because in the not too distant future, we may be seeing a design refresh for Windows. There's been some images going around that signify this possibility. So we're gonna keep our eyes on that and see where Microsoft goes with this new interface design. So again, feel free to let us know what you think about the creator's update and feel free to ask any questions. We are here to help you guys out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the not-too-distant future.